How many of you got that song stuck in your head now? Do 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 do. And now this is demonetized. Not that it was monetized in the first place, but now it's demonetized. <laughs> This is the second time I'm recording this today. Sup, kids? How are you doing today? I am not doing well. I'm not gonna, not gonna lie. Uh, we are in the middle of a heat wave in the UK when I'm recording this. It's negatively affecting me and uh, negatively affecting my health. So you may notice if you're watching this on the YouTubes. Sorry, just getting this cable out of the way of uh, the way of the microphone. Uh, that I'm not in my usual space, and that's because sitting in my usual space was making me nauseous. Uh, because it's that warm, so I came downstairs to sit in a cooler place, which is next to a nice brick fireplace, uh, and, and, and I'm sat on a nice cold pillar. So who's ready for some story time? We're going to tell some stories. That's what's going to happen on this podcast. It may not be that funny, but here's some stories about my life. So when I was young, and I say a little young. I was starting primary school, so I don't actually know how long I was. So it was like year three. It must have been year three. Because I was a, an infant school for year one and two. At reception year one and two. And then year three, I was going to move up to junior school. And I didn't. I moved over to a primary school because that's where my mom worked. Um, first day, doing PE. It's a pretty simple, pretty simple thing. You know, first time doing PE. New school, new people, new, new kids everywhere. And I, you know, I... S- get in there and i find out that the 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 school uniform for the school is for pe for boys uh was shirtless shirtless and in boxes well not boxes but shorts uh and plimsolls or socks i think it was socks it probably socks which now the more i think about it the stranger this sounds right it just sounds weird so you got a bunch of like kids sitting around uh, sure this, but either way, so the main point of this story is that I took off my shirt and uh, another kid next to me started making fun of me for being fat whilst being shirtless, saying that I had moobs. I then proceeded to spend the rest of the PE lesson covering my chest because, you know, self-conscious and bullying and that, that kind of thing. And then my mom noticed, uh, she worked at the school, as I said, when she moved over and we got the rules changed, um... To allow boys to wear shirts, because it was ridiculous that we were shirtless to begin with anyway. The, again, the more I think about it, the more it just sounds really fucking creepy that we were shirtless. And the hall, like, the entrance like the entrance to the school looks into that hall. I don't feel like you could get away with that in this day. I don't know. I don't know. But that's story one. So story two. I recently, um, during the lockdown period, I was uh, partially dating someone. And we hung out one time, and I was making sandwiches. Making sandwiches, so in the kitchen, cutting a loaf of bread. And how I cut bread is, so I I got my bread maker, I've talked about my bread maker on this before. I've talked about how, you know, my bread bread maker may be the best purchase I've ever made in my entire life. And you should probably go get a bread maker if you want to get a bread maker, get fresh bread. Just a little bit. So... You know, I've got this bread maker and it's great. So I'm cutting bread and then my natural habit when I cut bread is I cut bread and then I plop it down on the scale in front of me. When I say that, it sounds weird. And the person I was dating at the time thought it was strange as well and questioned me. It's like, what are you, are you weighing your bread? And it turns out that yes. Yes, in fact, I know how much my bread weighs. And just for point of reference, a slice of bread weighs about 100 grams. If correctly cut, and I haven't fucked up the cut... An average, on average, a slice of bread weighs about 100 grams. But it hadn't struck me as odd. I've been doing it for months and months and months and months since I got my bread maker. But it turns out it's, it's quite an odd thing. Why are you weighing slices of bread? Well, well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that thing. Third story. I was on a school trip. Now, school trips back in the day, you know, before COVID, when school trips used to happen. <laughs> it's a sad time. Sad time for you kids. I apologize. I realize that there's millions and thousands of deaths going on right now. Um, but uh, yeah, school trips just may never happen again. But was it was a school trip. I think we were in Beamish. Beamish, if you don't know, is in the UK. Um, I might do a quick, a quick check. Um, 
but I, I believe I usually just time. See, this is the thing. I haven't got my computer in front of me, so I usually just. Oh, let me move that way. Beamish. Yes. So Beamish is a museum in the UK, which, if you're unaware of, is is classed as a living museum. So it's set up as a town from a time period. I cannot remember the time period. I should have probably looked that up when I just Googled it. But it's up a town, town and time period. So it's got trams. It's got old sweet shops. It's got really, like, I'm going to say Victorian era stuff. It's got a mine because there was a mine there. Um, and it's, yeah, it's like a living museum. So we were on this tram, school trip, bunch of kids around me. Um, and there was a, 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 another school on this tram with us. And me being... Uh, warm and not handling heat well it was the height of summer was on this tram with these kids and kids from the other school started to make fun of me because I was sweating uh, and making pig noises so that was the whole thing I will end the story on on an up note a member of my school suddenly got very protective of me, who I didn't expect to get protective of me at all, um, and he allowed me to sit down, and I thought that was very nice of him, because I was stood up holding onto the rail, um, because I'm on a tram, that's what you do when you're in a tram. But those are three stories. Now, why do I tell these three stories? Why do I tell three stories which relate semi to one another? Because they're all about body confidence, and they're all about weight, and they're all about moments in my life which had an impression on me and how I look at myself and my own weight. Now, the two early stories, the ones as a kid, basically the crux of the matter is that I'm, I'm I can't say that, I'm, I'm, I was going to say I'm fat. I'm not fat. I'm fat minded, right? That's, and that's a, that's a whole concept I'm going to throw into this. The idea of being fat and being fat minded are two different things. You can be fat, but not be fat minded. You can be fat minded and not be fat. It's a mental health issue. It's all body. It's all body image. But as a kid, I was a big kid. I was a, I was a very big kid. I was one of the biggest in my class. Um, when I got taller, because I'm six foot two, and I got tall when I was in school, I stayed big. My my body didn't balance itself out for years and years and years, not until I went to college. So I was big and I was tall. So I was a. If there was ever a a target for insecurity, you know, you could paint it on my fucking back. So. That that is a whole thing, but those are experiences I had when I was very young, um, and they had a very strong impression on me. But the the the, the bread story is very recent; is you know happened this year. My point being that the impressions made on you and health and weight last an absolute lifetime, guys. Like it's not a short thing. And why am I discussing this? Because the government, in its infinite wisdom and glory, decided to put out a fucking notice, which tells people that weight and health are the only link which is important right now. Despite the, you know, the national international health crisis. Um, you know, we thought, no, you guys need to lose some fucking weight. No, fuck you. <laughs> to be to be blunt about this, you know. Fuck you, Boris Johnson. Um, I didn't want, you know, it's, it's one of these things that it comes up every so often that someone will just kind of reach out and go, oh, hey, you know, your, your weight and your health. Uh, the, the only link which matters, and it's, it's absolute crap. And I want people to know. I want people to know that that's absolute crap. There is so many factors in between those two words and those two monuments of a personality that come into play. That that shouldn't be the conversation. It's it's irresponsible. It's dangerous, and we're gonna get a little bit a little bit into that. So, I just say, I'm fat minded, which basically means that at some point in my life, I was bigger than I am now, and I had negative experiences related to that, which now make an impression on my own body image in my day and day. And I think this is something which probably doesn't get discussed as much with guys as it does women, because obviously the media takes a very strong stance on women's appearance. It doesn't particularly on men, but insecurity in men is, is rife. It's sky high. I've got a huge amount of it, um, but I don't take my shirt off at the beach. I wouldn't. Why would I? You know, um, because of, it's not even particularly that I'm embarrassed. It's just insecurity. Because I know I look okay. Because I've you know had people tell me that I look okay. So I do have that knowledge. Um, but it's an internal thing. It's completely an internal thing. But at the same time, you know, I think it's important to remember that weight and health aren't related. Because like when I did the Couch to 5K and I did the uh, talked about in the podcast, which is apologies to Sarah Millican, um, 
Which, by the way, got a bunch of views for some reason the other day. It suddenly just sparked up, so suddenly it suddenly trended somewhere. Um, I never know where people come from when people listen to the podcast, so you know, thank you if you did listen. But I did that, and I, I got to 5K, and I didn't lose any weight during that period. You know, I didn't lose a pound. I was 16 stone, and I was still 16 stone by the time I finished it. So if you need a clearer example of those things not being related... As well, people use the body mass index, the BMI, as a point of bastion of truth. It's really not. It's really not a truth. Because, again, I was like healthy at that point. I was running 30 minutes, a, you know, three times a week and not particularly struggling. You know, it was tough. As I mentioned, the end run was tough as hell. Um, and that didn't really change for another month. But I was healthy. You know, I was getting here. I was active. But I was still 67. And according to the BMI, I was overweight. I was edging towards what they classify as obese. So that's crazy, right? That's If there's a, a blunter example needed, that is the blunt example. Not to mention, you get guys who are muscle and bodybuilders and weigh an absolute amount and aren't particularly active. They can do a lot of weights, but their cardio is crap, you know, because they're not looking for their balance. They're looking for muscle. In the same way that runners don't have a lot of muscle... They're just very svelte, I believe is the word, when it, when it comes into these things. But it's just, it seems such a strange statement to choose. And I realize that a lot of it is distraction from the current situation. I realize a lot of it is, is just wanting to appear actiony in a state where there is no action from the government. But these things have impacts. They have such a strong impact. I wrote a piece about it one time. If you never really escape it, it just follows you around. Um... And it follows you in such a way that does affect basically everything you do with your body. It affects everything you do. So I've been losing weight, which is the other part. You may have noticed if you watch the videos, I've, I've been losing weight since January. This is since I've been losing weight. And I've been actively trying to lose weight. This hasn't been accidental. I can't lose weight accidentally. <laughs> That's because I'm of my genetics. I'm not a person who loses weight accidentally. You can ask anyone in my family. I was a big kid. Why? Because I fucking love food and I didn't get really much exercise at all because I hate exercise. And PE is the devil's work because it's focused on competition and greed and all those kinds of things. The things which I don't enjoy. I've discussed that in a different podcast. But, you know, I was big. That's what I did. And I was big because I love food. I still love food. That doesn't change. I love cooking. I love eating. I love flavors. There's like barely any foods which I won't eat. I mean, blueberries comes to mind. Blueberries are terrible. Why would anyone enjoy blueberries? Avocado as well. Why is people into avocado and coconut? All right, so there's like three main foods which I won't try. But I love food. I think about food a lot. Like, a lot. I'm thinking about food this evening because I'm thinking, what can I have for my tea? By the way, if you're wondering why I'm having my tea, I'm having a jacket potato with some vegetarian kebab meat, meat, faux meat, um, on top of it. I'm going to mix a sauce into that. It's going to be delicious. It's going to be buttery. Oh, it's going to be great. That's, yeah, see, I love food. <laughs> you don't escape that. So, you know, changing everything you are to change your weight is a big thing. So I've been trying to lose weight. Um, because I want to get down from 16 stone, mainly for practicality reasons, because I came, I became comfortable with the idea that I'm not comfortable with my own body years and years and years ago. Um, so I just kind of accepted that. I accepted that regardless of what I look like, I'm never going to be happy. So well, let's just not focus on that. Regardless of how I change, what I do with my body, I'm probably never going to be happy because I'm an insecure person. So why not just be comfortable with being insecure? No, don't make my appearance and uh, my weight and anything which I have around me a factor, which is why essentially I just dress comfortable all the time. My main goal in life is to be comfortable for 90% of my day in terms of my appearance. That's, that's just a fact. I have completely lost my train of thought. Well, back to what I was saying. So I was trying to lose it. I was doing it mainly for logical reasons. That started running, and it's easier to run if I'm carrying less weight. So, <laughs> therefore, I should probably lose some weight. And I want to get back down, because 16 is about, it's probably the biggest weight I've ever been um, in recent years. So I thought, you know, it would be, be good to kind of get that down. And also to see if I could. Lockdown provided me with a lot of opportunity to do that. It provided me with a very structured diet. Um, 
And yeah, that was essentially the goal. I was losing it for reasons which weren't trying to lose it for reasons which I assume were kind of not superficial, more just related to my own sense of well-being and my own sense of stamina and all, and all those kinds of things. And that was that was my goal. So I have been losing weight. I've been doing things, and it changes a lot of things. It makes you a lot consider a lot of things. It's changed my body in ways which I kind of didn't expect. Like it should have. I logically should have thought about it, right? I should have thought, okay, if I lose weight, my jeans won't fit. My t-shirts will fit differently. That should have come into my mind. But I guess in some sense, because I lost weight so gradually, uh, I didn't notice until. You know, one day I was putting on jeans and like, you know, these don't quite fit anymore. You know, they're, they're really baggy. They're kind of uncomfortable to wear now. So, you know, that's what, again, that tr- that's what triggered me to go buy new jeans is I was uncomfortable. And I'm all about the comfort. That's, you know, that's my entire life. Be comfortable. So then you can do things which make you uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Been through these podcasts, you know what I'm saying. But it's, yeah, it, it carries you in every decision you make. And, you know, losing weight and gaining weight I mean, I haven't spoken about gaining weight and, and things like uh, anorexia or anything like that because I don't have experience with it, so it's not something which I'm going to really talk on. But it, it all falls into that same category of when you make health and weight related to one another in the public view, you're, you're bound to do so much more damage. And this is why I want to talk about it. This is because it's for a lot of people, it might not even be an issue. It might not be a thing uh, to consider because they look at themselves and go, yeah, you know, I'm a reasonable weight. Therefore, I'm reasonably healthy. And that might not necessarily be true, guys. That's, you know. I know a lot of people who are what is classed as the correct weight, finger quotes, uh, and are terribly unhealthy. And I know a lot of people who are bigger and are very healthy. And a lot of people who are smaller and are very healthy. It's just different body. So it's just a very blunt swipe that they've taken across the world. I think we've gotten better with it over the last 10 years of having... Uh, better public perception of weight and sizes and differences um, and having that represented in media that's come a long way and I you know I think that's a very good thing so I, I think this in a way is almost like a, an archaic view which the government pushed out for for you to focus on to say oh hey you know th- this is the problem this is why people are dying from corona is because you're fat no it's fuck that that's not true not true at all. People are dying of corona because of terrible handling of the, the situation. The NHS is doing great. There are other factors at play. Um, what was I saying? Media. Yeah, so in media. So there was a couple of characters, though. I, you know, I want to do a couple of shout-outs. Like, being a big kid, you didn't see other big kids on, uh, on television represented well. That just wasn't a thing. Um... But the, the way they always play it off is that you have a big kid, uh, but the kid's funny. And that's how they that's how they're trying to balance it. You never see a big kid as like the, the sex symbol. Um, weird to say. <laughs> oh, the love interest is probably a better way to put this, Graham. Um, you know, um, within TV, you, you never really got that. Um, I mean, there's, it, it, when I think of films which involve big kids, I think of Mighty Ducks and I think of Goldberg, who is the the fat goalie that was the the whole crux of the matter was he was fat and a goal but he he managed it you know he was very self-aware uh, as a character and as an adult the, the person who played him um and i think in a way cartoons probably do the best job of that probably doing the best of handling um tubbiness and, and fat kids and stuff like that again i'm probably as you'll notice i'm talking from a very male's perspective and again that's because i'm male and i'm not you know i've never grown up a big female i've grown up a big male um but i think yeah that one of the best representations i ever saw to open this conversation was uh within king of the hill king of the hill has bobby hill who is he's he's a fat kid and there's a great episode okay so there's an episode in um, King of the Hill, which I, if you can get hold of it, I'd say go watch it because it's fantastic. But I'm going to talk you through it. So essentially, Peggy has big feet for a woman. She thinks she's like size 11 or something. She has very large feet for a woman. And there's a whole kind of subplot, but it breaks down to she's very upset about it and she's having a cry about it in a bedroom. Um, and Bobby comes in and kind of bluntly says to her, Mom, why are you crying? 
Um, and she's like, oh, because, you know, I'm ugly, I'm different, and, and all these kinds of things. All the things which, when you have something physical which people point out, you get pointed out and they heavily affect you. Whenever that happens, you know, you, it breaks you down. So she's crying about this. And he says, well, why are you crying? You've always taught me, you know, to be proud of myself. And she, she, she can't get it. She can't understand it. And he's like, mom, I'm fat. And she, to which she's replying, oh, no, Bobby, you're husky. He's like, no, mom, I'm fat. I'm aware of it. But I don't let it keep me down. I'm going to be the first fat comedian to make it past 30 you know referring to chris farley and john canny and all these kinds of stuff. that as a as a young person was an incredible message to see on television you know that's someone who is aware of how society sees them is aware of their body is confident in their body and he's just owning it you don't see that from from fat guys in in tv you don't you see them as the butt of the joke, the friend of a friend. That's how they're seen. Um, and I think Bob's Burgers, which is one of my favorite shows, does another incredible job of that. Because Gene, as a character, the son in Bob's Burgers, is another big kid. But it's never really mentioned. It's never even broached. It's just all that's mentioned is that he likes food. And then the rest of everything is focused on every all his other things. His talents and his skills and his funniness and all that kind of stuff. And he's probably one of the funniest characters in the show as well. Um, but he's, he's musically talented and he goes into all of those things and it's just there's such a good message because he's he's there you know they're healthy they're, they're enjoying life and that's the message which we should be sending out to people is that your your body and your life are your own as long as you feel healthy and you feel active and whatever active means for you you know act natural whatever that means for you that's the message we should be sending out. Not, oh, hey, if you're on this scale and you're different on this scale, then you should be concerned and you should be anxious about these things. Those are the kinds of things which are going to cause damage in the lung. Because you got to think as well, you might be thinking that this doesn't affect you. You might be thinking, oh, hey, you know, it doesn't matter to me. I'm well past that. I've never had these issues. Like, well, your kids might, you know. You ever been in a school and had most of the school make fun of you for the, the way you look? And what if that, that you know, insult and derogation, degradation comes government mandated? That's ridiculous. That's a dangerous way to, to have something function when kids are already going through enough. Like, I'm never going to say you're going to stop bullying because school and the whole school experience, regardless of how terrible it is, is a lot about power struggles. It's a lot about learning that power struggle between one another. And by the time you come out of school, you're meant to have learned how to balance that, how to manage that with yourself and the everyone, you know, and have some perspective and say, oh, that everyone has come through it and gone, okay, well, you know, oh, right. So that was what that was all about. So now I can be an actual decent human being. That's a lot of what school is about. We'll get into school on a different day. Um, but yeah, to have that government mandated and mandated to say, oh yeah, you know, anyone who's overweight and their BMI is this, this, and this is fucking unhealthy. Therefore, you you can you should chastise them, call them out in public. No, fuck that. Fuck anything to do with that. You know, that's that's absolute ridiculousness. I can't say that. You know, I'm I'm gonna ever change that. As I say, it's it's something which lasts forever. Something which I still have. Something which I still think about a lot, struggle with. Every time I see myself naked, I'm looking at myself and going, oh hey. There's that guy. I'm going to never see myself as attractive. You could probably slap me on the front of a fucking magazine and I'm never going to see myself as attractive because that's something which is heavily ingrained. Like the, so the bread story, which I told, you know, as much as you can say health and weight are related, I hadn't realized I developed this other habit. You know, there is a negative side to doing this. You know, losing weight can be great. It can be really healthy. It can be really good for you. It can be something which you feel very proud of. But there is also a danger that you'll go too far. Like with that, I go measuring bread. I can't stop measuring bread. I know how much my bread weighs. I do it now mainly just to make sure I don't waste a loaf because, you know, having a hundred gram slices is a pretty good way of making sure you're measuring the right loaf. But I'm no longer looking at it and going, oh, hey, well, that's 100 grams. I guess I can't have another slice. No, I'm like, yeah, maybe I want another slice of bread. 
it was but it was something which wasn't it hadn't been like i hadn't noticed it until someone pointed out to me and said oh hey it's pretty weird that you wait to measure your bread and i'm like yeah you know what that is pretty weird i'm gonna keep an eye on that it's self-awareness that's all it comes down to it's not fat and thin it's not health and weight it's self-awareness being comfortable in yourself being comfortable in your own body if you want to lose weight lose weight do it in a healthy manner know why you want to lose weight don't do it just because the government told you to don't do it just because magazine is telling you that everybody's thin and that films are only got full thin people and blah, blah 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 don't do it for that do it for yourself do it for comfort in your own body that's the reason i, I kind of started doing mine if i wanted to do mine if you are curious the way i do mine is and i don't know if this helps anyone but if it does, you know, it's and I won't say it's like a way of doing it, it's no secret trick. This is just the method I use. It's gonna work different for everybody's mentality, everyone's body. You know, I use a calorie tracking app, which is uh, my fitness pal, not a sponsor or anything. And that's basically it. I use a calorie tracking app. And I make sure that's a good start. And then uh at Christmas I got myself a Fitbit, but that was to monitor my running to make sure my heart rate wasn't gonna you know, die. You know. Um and yeah, and that's it. So I make sure the calories I have going out outweigh the calories I have going in. And that's it. That's the methodology I use. And having those two things, I find helps me. It gives me that structure and reminds me. That's all it is. So I make choices based on my day-to-day of food. And just reminds me what I'm eating. Because it's so easy to forget. As I say, I love food. It's so easy to forget what you're intaking. So I just keep intaking stuff. I can't, can't control that. Um, but yeah, you know, if that's what you want to do, and it can, again, that app as well can help you gain weight if you want to gain weight. Sets your calorie goals, and it just keeps you in mind. Keeps you in mind. All I really want people to do is be comfortable with themselves, and I realize that's a very hard thing to do. So, yeah. I wanted to put this podcast out to say, hey, guys, look, it's not as bread and butter as the government has made it. These things never really go away. So... You know, buckle in if you have these things. It's more important to learn to manage these things than to learn, you know, or focus on the things which are being put out in the media and, and, and by the government. It's more important to make yourself comfortable, make everything else comfortable around you, and then decide what you want to do with yourself and your body. That's, you know, the simplest way I can put it. Focus on you, don't focus on everybody else. And again, I know that's hard, harder to do than just being said. And there's a few ways you can do it. And if you are going to go down the health loss line, not health loss line, weight loss line, you know, do it do it gradually. Set yourself a long-term goal. Just say, you know, by the end of the year, I'm going to weigh less than I do now. Because then even if it's a couple of pounds, you succeeded. Until then, take care of yourself. I hope you're all safe and well. We're still in some crazy times. And I hope this helps. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.